clap sync. Man, what a YouTuber. Hello there. And today we will be reviewing trapezoidal rule. Now, here are just some examples of trapezoids. Remember, a trapezoid has parallel sides. The other two sides can be any angle they want. They can be at any angle, just have to have be it. It just has to have two parallel sides and be quadrilateral. And we can use trapezoids to estimate the area under a curve because this is still a trapezoid, even though this might be the iconic version of a trapezoid. Now, this is just a way to estimate without actually taking an integral, taking just what's there. So you might remember LRAM and RRAM classics. And trapezoid rule is actually the average of these two because if you think about it, we have this, that's the difference, right? So this is the difference between the two. Of these both have their different inaccuracies, their errors. This one's an overestimate, obviously. This one's underestimating. Trapezoidal rule is more accurate because it's literally cutting that right through there. So it's like taking that difference and then having it. So that's why it's more accurate and you can actually find what you would get with trapezoidal rule by averaging LRAM and RRAM. So the actual trapezoidal rule, here's what it would look like on a nice graph with nice graphics better than I can draw. And you can see if we zoom in, you have this point, this point, it goes a straight line across and it does that for all of them. Now, quick reminder, that's the equation for the area of a trapezoid. And then the H stands for the height, which is the distance between the two bases. And then the two different bases have their own values. And that's the equation. And obviously, since these are all tilted this way, the height would be the change in X, actually. So whatever the width of your sub interval is, that would be the height. And then since these are the parallel sides, these would be your bases. But uh, in the equation I'm about to show you, they would they would call them y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, and so on, as many as you need. But uh, that is how they represent it here, all with the different bases. So here you can see it's very similar to the actual equation of a trapezoid. You got the height divided by two, just all put in the one space, which is a little bit neater. And then, but notice here, you have all of your y values, but the ones in the middle are all multiplied by two. This is because you find your add, this is the sum of all of the trapezoids you could ever use. So the first trapezoid, you'd use your first y, your second y. All right, cool. Then when you move on to your second trapezoid, right, you're using this value again and you're using this value. So you've now used this twice. And then when you move on to the next one, you know, you're using this one and this one. So you now use this value twice. And then at the end, you've only used this value. This is twice, you've used that twice, and you've used that once, and you've used the first one once. So that's why you got to multiply all of the ones in the middle. You don't forget, it's very important. You're going to have a very, it's gonna be incredibly off if you don't remember that. So enough talking, let's actually do some math. Uh, the first example problem here is the graph of f equals negative one fourth x squared plus x plus three. And we've got a nice graph given to us and it's f of x. Now let's estimate the integral of zero to six of f of x dx using trapezoidal rule and six sub intervals. Well, we know that it's going from zero to six, so it's all this area. And it wants six sub intervals. So every inch sub interval will be a change of x of one or height of one. So there's the equation again. Then our y0 would be three. And then two times y1, which here, uh, I promise it does actually equal 3.75. If you actually put it into the equation, it would equal 3.75 if you wanted to double check. Two times y3, which is just four. And then another 3.75 plus two. I'm running out of room. Uh, this is three here two times 1.75, and then the final value is just zero. So you can just put zero there, and actually this should have been a bracket. So there's all that. It looks very gross. You could do it by hand, but I'm just gonna use my calculator because I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> 
because we can and to save time because it <laughs> so you know one half times parenthesis three plus and then since all the metal values are multiplied by two you can do a quick two parenthesis there now i'm just going to cut to when i finish putting it in <laughs> so just making sure you got your parentheses right you got the parentheses between the middle values and that final value is just zero but if it was not zero you would need to include it and parentheses enter and we get 17.75 so you could say the integral from zero to six of f of x dx is about 17.75 now if you actually input into your calculator this equation you will get 18 exactly so that is a really close approximation that did pretty well there so our next problem is estimate the area under the curve of f of x equals x cubed plus 3 x squared minus 2 x minus 5 from negative 3 to 1 using trapezoidal rule with two subintervals all right so real quick there's the trapezoidal rule and it's asking for two subintervals and it's going from negative 3 to 1 so the distance, the change in x between our subintervals is going to be two this time. So remember to check your height is not always going to be one. It will change sometimes. And we don't have a graph this time. So we're actually gonna have to put in our values ourselves. Luckily, we only have to find three because you have start at negative three, you move two, you get to negative one, do another two, one. So f of negative three equals negative three cubed plus three, three times negative three squared minus two and negative three minus five equals, these two will cancel out, uh, equals negative, which equals positive six minus five equals just negative one. All right, so we got our first value of negative one and then f of negative one equals negative one cubed plus three and negative one squared. Sorry if I'm going a little sloppy. I'm not trying to take up too much time, but I do want to show you all the work. So this would be negative one plus three plus two minus five, which equals negative one. Okay. All right. And then finally, this last value don't multiply by two. So just leave it f of one, which is pretty straightforward. One plus three minus two minus five is what is it <laughs> negative three so negative three so that's just one out front don't have to really worry about it anymore negative one minus two minus three negative six so the area under that curve altogether is about negative six Editor Novi here. Um, I turned this in as it is. This clip here was not in the project I turned in, but I needed to fix it if I was going to post this to the public. So the, with the positive one, the area is estimated to be negative four. And I'm about to show you that if you find the actual integral using the equation, it's going to be negative four. And so that makes the point I'm about to say after that irrelevant, but it still stands. The smaller, more intervals you have, the more accurate your thing is going to be. That still remains true. That just didn't apply in this situation and that's on me I'm sorry now if we actually put it into our calculator just to double check enter we get negative four now two being a difference when it's like these small numbers is pretty significant but remember also we only use two sub intervals the less sub intervals you use the less accurate it'll be that's how it is but that question asked for it so it's all right, they expected it to be, you know, pretty off. Uh. Now for our third problem, we just have a table. Using the table above, estimate the integral using trapezoidal rule at the highest accuracy possible. Well, we wanna use as many subintervals as possible. So we wanna use all of the values. However, the issue here is, well, these don't have a consistent height. Uh, as you can see here, difference is three, difference is two, difference is two, difference is four. What do we do? We can't use the fancy, the fancy rule that we just learned. Well, sometimes they'll tell you to use trapezoidal rule, even if you can't use trapezoidal rule, if that makes sense. Sometimes it'll just be like that because they just want to make things harder for you. Don't ask me why, I'm just a student too. So what we have to do in this situation is account for every 
trapezoid separately. So again, area of a trapezoid is one half height, base one plus base two. So finding the area of all of this, the one half you can just put out front because it's consistent, but now we have to do the height times base one plus base two for the rest. So the height of this first trapezoid that would be made by these would be three. And then the first base is five, the second base is one, All right? The next one, height would be two. The first divide is one, the second one is negative one. For the third one, the third one here, height is two again, negative one plus two. And then our last one, height would be four and two plus three. So again, you could just throw this into your calculator, but these numbers are actually not that bad. So I will just, three times six is 18, two times zero is zero, two times one is two, and four times five is 20. So we get one half times 40, which equals 20. The integral is about 20. So since we weren't given the equation, we can't like throw it into our calculator and check it like we could with the other ones. So sometimes you do just have to trust your work but hopefully you feel more capable after watching this video and reviewing how to use trapezoidal rule and getting a little more practice with it. And you got this.